Welcome back everyone. In the last lesson, we did some great work to get our Node HTTP server up and running. Everything is looking great so far. And so let's get right into it and continue building out our server. And picking up from where we left off, I have my server still running here. I'm just going to kill that for now and clear out my terminal. And so if you remember from our last lesson, our server is not doing anything meaningful right now. And so what I want to do as the next kind of step is create a default API route that we can configure and this will be able to return something when someone makes a response to our server other than that uh, weird cannot get slash stuff that we saw in the browser when we did make a call to our API. All right, so let's get started and um, implement what we need to do here. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna start speeding things up a bit. I'm gonna write the code and then we can walk through it as we go along. So the first thing I wanna do is reference the app or the express server. And we're going to use the dot notation to access some of the, the functions. I'm going to select this use function here. So we're gonna pass two arguments into this function. The first one is going to be the actual route that we want to hit here. So I'm going to implement a string here just with a simple forward slash and then I'm going to put in that second argument which is going to be the request handler. And so at this point, I'm going to make it an asynchronous function. All right, I'm gonna open that up and this function is going to receive a request and a response. In the body of this async function that I've just created, I'm going to do a res.json and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to give it a key here of code as well as a message and we'll just say success. Okay, very simple stuff. So before I explain to you what exactly is going on here, let's just run our server. I'm going to go make sure you're in your server folder. We're going to run a node index.js. All right, uh, we've got that output confirming that our server is running. And so I'm going to open up our browser tab. Now, instead of just hitting localhost, I'm going to navigate to the slash root. And you'll see if I hit enter, I'm just going to make this a big bigger for you to see. You'll see that we get our JSON object that we defined in the response. And we see our code is 200 and the message there is success. Okay, great. So to kind of walk you through what we did here is we referenced the express server that we've initialized previously. We're calling the use function. This use function takes in two arguments. The first argument is going to be a route that we define in our API. So when a user navigates to this route in the URL, it's going to then forward that request from that route to whatever we pass in as our second argument into the use function. And the second argument that we've just passed in, you can see it's an asynchronous function, but this is what we call a request handler when we're writing these node APIs. So again, just to summarize, this first argument is going to be the route that the user navigates to in the URL. And then the second argument is going to be how we handle that request. And so you'll see that this is a function that receives two arguments, a request and a response. And this comes from the express service. So this is stuff that just happens behind the scenes for you. This is the magic that happens in the express library. These two objects are being passed in for you, the request and the response. And then in the body of our request handler, we can now use the request and response and see how we are doing things. So what we have done in our case is simply called the, the response and we've accessed a method on, on the response object called JSON, which allows us to send JSON back to the person or, or the user that has requested this route in our API. And we are simply sending back a JSON object with two keys. The first one, a code, which is we've assigned to the value of 200, which is generally when working with RESTful APIs, the code that says everything is A-OK. -okay. And lastly, we just put a message together there, a little string saying success. So very simple stuff, nothing too major here. There's a few things I just want to point out here so that um, we're 100% clear. We can name our root pretty much anything. Just remember, there's different ways to name. I mean, we could have named this root test. Now that we've changed the value of this, we need to restart our service. So I'm going to go to over to terminal, hit control C, which is going to kill our server. And then we will rerun it with the new changes. I'm going to open up my browser tab. And then if I hit refresh, you'll see that 
we get that message cannot get slash it's not finding any routes that we've defined here so if i do a localhost colon 3000 forward slash test you'll see now we're actually hitting our response that we want to get at that specific route in our api all right so i'm going to just collapse that now that we're getting a uh, a little bit further with our development of this API, starting and stopping the server every time we make a change to the code is going to get really frustrating. So let's take a short break here. In the next lesson, we're going to configure a handy NPM package that will allow us to have what we call hot re reloading in our development process. I'll see you on over in the next lesson. Cheers for now.